Hey guys, how's it going? Thanks for coming. I'm Nick and this is Real Life Money where we talk about real life and money because you know schools aren't. Don't forget to subscribe so let's get started. So in this video we're talking about 17 trading tips for the stock market. Now we have to understand that trading and investing are two completely different things. Investing is for the long term. One year, two year, five, even five plus years out. But trading is shorter term, could be a few months, could be a few weeks, a few days, or even within a day. Uh, so everyone's strategy is different. However, I think we could all learn from this because to invest for the long term, it's good to understand short term tr trading strategies to find out like a good time to get in as well. So these 17 trading rules are technically not mine. I got a sh sheet right here i actually met a guy at the gym he's been trading on the new york stock exchange for like 30 40 years or something like that shout out to bernie um but i will find out which book he got this from i actually just emailed him he's sick recently um but i'll find out which book so you guys could check it out um so i might not necessarily agree with all of them you might not agree with all of them but it's good to understand a bunch of these so let's go right in i'll try to keep all of these short just because there's 17 of them i don't want this to go on for like half hour so the first trading strat or trading rule is to diversify capital now i completely agree with this rule because diversifying is very very important yes you could have all your money in one stock and you could do tremendously well but uh if the stock goes down then you get destroyed so diversifying not only different stocks or different sectors different industries but you could also diversify in other assets. You could go into bonds, you could go into real estate, you could go into simple cash, which is partially my favorite as well because it's super simple. You won't lose any money and it provides liquidity in case an opportunity comes along, you go in. Number two, which is something that I personally don't necessarily agree with, but that is to use stop loss orders. Some people love them, some people hate them. It really depends on what you're thinking. But if you don't know what a stop loss order is, uh, when you go into a stock and let's say it goes up, you could put in a stop loss order at a certain point. So if it goes down and hits that level or goes below that level, you sell out automatically. Now this could kind of help guarantee a profit so it doesn't continue to go down, down, down. However, if there's like a correction, a spike down, a sell off, like recently, it could drop, hit that level, you'll sell out, but then it rebounds and you don't get back in, you lost that the stock, you lost the opportunity, and you're just sitting in the water. So that's why I personally don't like them for the long term. If you're trading, could be a little bit better. There is another rule, uh, the fourth rule we'll get to that kind of makes the stop loss order make sense. Number three is to never over trade. Now the first obvious example of that is because there's commissions. The more you trade, the more expensive it's gonna be. I use TD Ameritrade, that's $7.95 per share. Um, so that it adds up over time. People don't realize that. So the more trades that you make doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to make more money or you're a better investor. Um, unless you have like Robinhood, because there's no commissions there. Um, if you're interested in Robinhood, I do have a link in the description. We could both get a free stock. Um, but I do have Robinhood. It is pretty good. Uh, maybe not necessarily for day traders, but it's a good uh, place to start. No commissions, so something to look into. Another idea of never to over trade is let's say if you make a huge amount of money on a trade, you're like, wow, I did so well, maybe I should play a little bit more with it. And then usually that's when people go wrong. So just, just be aware of what's going on and be patient sometimes. Number four, never let a profit run into a loss. Unfortunately, I did that a few times. And this is kind of what uh, one of the last ones we talked about, the stop loss order this kind of makes it make sense. So it's horrible when you're making good money and then all of a sudden it just turns back around and you start going into negative territory. Sometimes it's okay to take profits. Um, and I didn't necessarily always think that because I thought, hey, invest for the long term, have a stock forever and don't worry about it. Some stocks are like that, others aren't. Uh, maybe like smaller companies, growth companies, that's something that you should keep an eye on. When the growth isn't there anymore, the stock is just gonna go back down. So that's something you should actually take your profits and run. 
Number five, don't buck the trend, whatever you want to call bucking, but uh, um, we can relate that to a very popular saying, the trend is your friend. Some people believe that, some people don't believe that. Um, but it kind of does work. You could also see like when a stock is going up, it can make no sense whatsoever. You could see Bitcoin, you could see um, weed stocks, that was going up ridiculously. You know, there are some companies like Netflix or, Am well, not recently, they're kind of down, but they were just flying higher and higher, higher. They have a huge PE. People were like, there's no way it could go higher. And it did. Um, on the other side, Chinese stocks like Alibaba and all those guys, they're trending down. And a lot of people think they're undervalued. I do believe they're undervalued. Does that mean that they're a buy? Well, not necessarily because if the trend is down, they could go down even lower. Um, so sometimes the trend is your friend. You have to watch what, because a lot of people believe that. So if some people believe that, that means it's true sometimes. Um, so just be aware which direction it's moving. Number six, when in doubt, get out. And I completely agree with this because this could relate to two different scenarios. One could be like a gamble that you're not sure what's going to happen. Uh, it's probably too risky and it's a gamble. So you shouldn't, I don't personally like that. Uh, some people are different, so I would get out of that. But if you are in doubt of something, that usually means that you're not aware of what the business is doing or what's going on. And that's very risky because if a stock goes down and you don't know what's going on with the business, then you're iffy, you might sell the stock, but in reality, you know, with the business, it could be fine. Um, so the more research you do, the more confident you're gonna have in the stock that you own. And to some extent, it's not even like a money thing. It's just a mental thing. Once you get out of a stock that you're unsure about, it's just, it's more relaxing. It's easier and then you could just move on to another investment that you are more confident in. Number seven, which is trade in four or five stocks if possible. And so that does relate to diversification aspect uh, for me, because you do have to research all these stocks. And there's no way that you can research like dozens and dozens of companies, especially if you have a full-time job, you don't, you simply don't have the time for it. Um, so you have to do the research for these handfuls of companies. So I would suggest that. Now, if you're investing in large companies that have been around forever, they are steady growth type of companies, dividend companies or whatever, that don't require too much research, uh, you could have a little bit more, but this says four or five stocks to trade, like actively. Um, so I do agree with that. You have to keep up with what's going on. So that's why that number four to five makes sense. Number eight is trade only active stocks. Uh, so again, this is relating to trading. Um, but that does make sense because it's, you know, hot stocks that everyone knows. PayPal is going on, like, Al I mean, Alibaba is going down, but that's a hot stock going on. Uh, Amazon, Netflix, Facebook has kind of been out of uh, popularity recently. Um, they might get into it, but definitely, like, the hot stocks out there because they move. If you're looking at, like, back burner companies that no one knows about, yeah, they could do great but their movement is usually minimal because no one is looking at them. Number nine is trade at the market. Now this I believe is relating to options. I wanna say I'm no options expert. I'm aware of options, but I never really got involved with them. Basically for the main reason that most options expire. So you end up losing your premium. So I don't necessarily, necessarily like that. You can make good money on that. It's leverage position if you're if you don't know what an option is, one, you either don't use it, or two, learn more so you could be more confident in it. Um, covered call writing is a little bit more conservative, which I would go into, um, but for me personally, options as a whole, I don't care for it, um, just because they expire most of the time. Number 10, which is never average a loss, and I think you could kind of see this one of two ways. Obviously, from your total portfolio, if you're averaging a loss, then that means you're losing money and that's bad. Let's try to avoid that. Um, or it could also be dollar cost averaging. Um, 
So this is saying never average a loss. Some people dollar cost average down. So when a stock goes down, they buy more of it, more of it, more of it as it continues. I guess another way to look at it would be kind of the opposite. If it continues to go up, you buy more. Now, would I personally do that? I don't think so. It is something interesting to think of um, because if something is going down, sometimes that could be good because when it rebounds, you'll make money on all those entry points. However, if it continues to go down, then you're losing money on all those entry points. This one I would like to get you got your opinion. Uh, if you like to dollar cost average down or up, uh, that's probably a strategy. There's a strategy for everything. Um, I normally dollar cost average down. When a stock goes down, I buy more into it. Um, so I know a lot of people are doing that with Chinese stocks now. So it could work number 11 avoid taking big losses so of course everyone would not want to do this because that's horrible you're losing money and that's not good it's definitely a lot harder to make more money than lose more money because if you by the way this is really important if you lose 50 percent of your value you don't need a 50 percent return to get back to even you actually need more than 50%. You need 100% to get back to where you were. So that's why that sucks. Um, and especially if you're an investor, uh, if, if you have a big loss, that could relate to either a correction, a sell-off, or a crash. And normally time usually fix that. You just hold on to it, it rebounds. That's the direction of the US economy. Companies tend to do better over time. Um, so you hold on to it, it'll rebound you'll make that money back and you won't have that large loss number 12 is definitely for traders which is be just as willing to short sell as you are to buy now if you don't know what short selling is um buying a stock you're hoping the stock goes up so you make money short selling is the exact opposite when the stock goes down you actually make money um so if you're a trader you can make money like this because if something is either something about to go wrong or something's really high and you're expecting it to just correct back down to normal levels you can make money short selling for me i never short sell sold um and definitely for the long term overall i don't like short selling because businesses tend to grow and you could essentially lose like unlimited amounts of money because the higher the stock goes the more money you lose number 13 which is very important especially right now in chinese stocks never buy just because the price is low usually prices are low for a reason right now chinese stocks are a lot of people think they're undervalued and i kind of think that as well however that doesn't mean that it's a buy and that it's just going to rebound just because it's low um, anything could happen it could go even lower there are so many factors that go into it um, expectations and just everything um, and just because the stock is low doesn't mean you should buy it so that's not always true like if something is low you can buy it it could be an opportunity just understand like just because it's low it's a, it's always a buy Moving on to number 14, actually, never sell just because the price is high. That was going on for like Amazon and Netflix and all those like high flying stocks. Just because a stock has a high PE does not mean that you should just sell everything that you have. There's a reason why this stock is going higher and higher and sometimes it usually goes even higher. I mean, technically we're in a very long bull market right now. Since 2008, 2009, we've been going up and up and up. I mean, not in a straight line, but you know, bumpy ride upwards. Um, so, you know, all time new highs are continuously met. So if you're gonna just always sell when it's high, then you wish you luck. Again, everything is different. Something could be ridiculously high, you should absolutely sell out of it um because it can correct back down to normal levels number 15 or this way i don't know which way you guys are looking but number 15 be aware of inside information or tips now this could relate to a couple things if you're looking at insider trading don't do that because that's illegal uh most people shouldn't some people do um that's really up to you i guess it's a choice um but i wouldn't suggest that whatsoever but 
another way you could look at this if insiders like owners with inside the company are buying stock now that doesn't always mean that it's like oh insiders are buying i should too but that is a good indication that the the insiders are seeing you know growth potential for the future so that it kind of has some strength behind the business so maybe you should buy too number 16 is definitely true do not try to buy at the bottom and sell at the top that is virtually impossible now you look back at charts you're like oh obviously you're gonna buy this dip and sell at the peak duh but no one knows when that's happening like right now we could be at a bottom or it could continue lower it could reverse no one knows what's going on um so essentially you can try to buy at a low point not necessarily a bottom but low and sell at a high point not necessarily the top but that's still a spread and you still make money off of that if you're trying to time the market everyone talks about that it good luck which is why a lot of people invest for the long term um you know dollar cost average every single month putting money into it because over the long term stocks go up so you don't have to really time anything you just make money that way and number 17 it sucks but we have to do it always analyze your mistakes usually you try to avoid your mistakes because it hurts your heart soul and everything about you but the more you understand why you lost money you correct that so that doesn't happen in the future it will hurt now but it's going to definitely help you for future trades look at maybe why the company was bad or the company could have been good and you just sold out at wrong points so just evaluate what happened and hold on a bonus for the end something really simple is the acronym of kiss keep it simple stupid i love that one and that you can relate that to life literally there's there's a lot of people that just overanalyze stuff a ridiculous amount sometimes you just need that simple idea it's like hey this could work and it just does like whatever it may be the answer is usually simpler than you think so those are the 17 trading rules plus that little bonus at the end let me know what you guys think if you're an investor if you're a trader uh questions comments concerns please leave them down below um and thank you so much for watching guys and i'll see you in the next one